for vice related uh, crimes. Crystal, what are you doing? You want to say hi? Who is it, Eddie? Huh? Is it Eddie? Yeah. Is that Eddie? Yes, it is. What would I want to talk to him? Crystal, a familiar face, is on the phone with her pimp, who is also the father of her child. Chin lets her know he's watching. He has no reason to arrest Crystal yet. You gotta do what you gotta do, okay? Okay. Uh, Eddie, you said hi. Okay. <laughs> Tell him if I catch him driving, I'm gonna tell that jag. Well, I'm just telling you. You gotta get a good shirt. Well, I'm just telling you. Okay. All right? You won't be out here. Good night. Okay. Be careful. Let's watch her. Officers Chin and Landtrip follow Crystal at a distance, looking for a reason to pick her up. Police. How are you doing? Good. Crystal, what are you doing in the car? Huh? Step out of the car for me. What are you doing? Stand over there. Put your pants back up. My pants are up. They were never damn. What are you doing out here? Didn't I tell you to watch out? Huh? You don't listen to me? I listen. What did I just finish telling you? We got a wagon coming? Yeah. So many of these girls have never had anybody in their life ever tell them, hey, I'm very proud of you, you're doing the right thing. So what they do is a pimp who makes his, this is his job, his profession, he manipulates these, these young girls. Why are you getting cars? Don't you know? Isn't it dangerous out here in a mission? Isn't it more dangerous here in a mission than in downtown? After a few years working the beat, it becomes less an issue of enforcement and more a matter of the girl's safety. I know, why you look at you? Look at where you are, you know? Hey, you know there's been killings already. And you could, why's that? Most of the prostitutes know that sometimes the only people looking out for their best interests are the vice cops. See, we care about you. Come on. Sometimes, it's good knowing they're out there because there's like a lot of crazy people. If something bad happens, all you gotta do is flag them down. At the same time, like <laughs> disrupting my whole night, so. Officers Chin and Landrip take Crystal in for questioning, just like they have done a hundred times before. When you first made contact with the gentleman, how was contact made? Eye contact. Eye contact? Yeah. All right, kiddo, you're out of here, okay? No more. If I catch you again, you better go home tonight. You understand? Mm -hmm. They tell Crystal to go home, but they know she can't go home until she makes her quota for her pimp. For Mark Landrip, the frustrations are starting to build. Time and time again, same girls over and over. Unfortunately, it's um, an ongoing thing, and... There's not much change in it. So as far as the impact, it's, I actually feel it's, it's very little. Um, I wish we could do more, but that's the way our system's set up. The prostitution itself is really a uh, nuisance. San Francisco District Attorney Terrence Hallinan acknowledges the lack of prosecution for prostitutes, but he says the liberal attitude of the populace influences his office's action. Our office does not make it a, a, any kind of priority issue. The judges, uh, to be honest, don't want those cases in their courts. They don't regard them as serious. And if we go to trial, it's, uh, the juries very often refuse to convict, so they're not cases that we want to spend a lot of energy on. There's a lot of frustration on the part of the vice squad that I definitely feel, but it, it, that's the way it's going to be. Although the work Vice does can be frustrating, the officers find solace in the cases they see as making a difference. You got my page, you page me when you get in, okay? Mike Lawson and Susan Rolovich are leading a bust on a local escort service. Many escort services tread the line between being a legitimate business and just an ad for a pimp. 
any boxes or anything? Yeah. There's probably no g greater satisfaction in, in working in this type of, of uh, business is, is getting a pimp. Officer Rolovich has infiltrated the escort service as a working prostitute and gained the trust of the pimp. And with the public and people don't realize, it's not just, you know, two consenting adults, sex for money. That's not what happens. All the prostitution on the streets is run by pimps. Before she calls the pimp to arrange a meeting, Officer Rolovich sets up recording equipment so she can use the call later as evidence. Um, yeah, I should be here till about 5.30. Till 5.30? Yeah. Okay. And um, have you talked to Liz? Officer Rolovich uh, tries to make it clear on tape that the pimp is talking about sex for money. This guy paid $600 for two hours? Right. Okay. But he only had sex once. So it was pretty easy again. It was pretty easy again. Yeah. Well, the idea. Keep, Keep them coming. Yeah. Sergeant Lawson leads the briefing. The pimp is going to be on Fulton Street. This is where he has his office, where he has a contract, where he interviews the girls. He's already made one money drop to this guy on Fulton Street. And we're going to do one more money drop tonight. It's supposed to be $210 for two hours last night. Now that since he thinks I've worked for him a couple more times, he might, you know, at first they're really like, oh God, I don't know her. I can't say too much. She might be a cop, but... So maybe tonight, who knows what he'll say, you know. Inside the pimp's office building, Sue drops off the money, while the other vice officers wait right down the hall to move in and make the bust. You have the right to remain silent? You have the right to have an attorney uh, present with you. An easy bust. Now the vice officers gather the evidence they need to put him out of business permanently. Almost all of San Francisco's street prostitutes are controlled by pimps. But 90% of the sex trade operates behind closed doors at places like the Sophia Massage Parlor, where officers Chin and Landship are about to pay a surprise visit. Please open the door. Right now. Right now, I'm going to kick it in. Hey. Go have a seat. The Asian girls who work at these massage parlors come to San Francisco in search of the American dream. But once they get here, they're faced with a harsh reality. Tell me, what's happening? What's happening? The girls in most of the massage parlors are being brought into this country, mostly from Southeast Asia, and forced into prostitution by Asian organized crime. Lubricating jelly, uh, so the girls can basically have sex whether they want to or not. How long you be in this country? They have no choice. They're in a new country. The language is very difficult. Otherwise, they won't get a place to stay. They won't get anything to eat. They won't have any clothes. So they're forced into it. Hello, ladies, police, in front. Everybody in front. Let's go. Let's go, Chin, my butt. Let's go. Come here. Officer Chin is well known by most of the city's prostitutes. Today he recognizes Angie, the former streetwalker. Oh, comical drone, huh? Who now has a legitimate massage license. I didn't know you were here. Try to leave and get away from you and you come over here anyways. We go everywhere, you know that, Angie. Hi. How's it going? All right. What you need? I'm just going to get a massage from my back. It's killing me, but I guess not. Have a bad time. So what do you think about uh, the inside as far as uh, being inside and the outside? What do you think about that? Much better. You think so? Oh, yeah. It's a lot safer in here. Not as many problems. You don't have to worry about who you're getting in the car with. These girls come to me sometimes with black eyes, broken arms. They're basically intimidating by their pimps. And uh, people don't see that side of it. You just see it's a victimless oh. crime. It is not a victimless crime. The, the prostitutes are victims. Okay, kiddo. Be good, huh? Always, Chin, always. Angie, though still a prostitute, is one of the few streetwalkers lucky enough to have escaped her pimp. You have a gun in the purse? Oh, yeah, too. Okay. And Chin knows that's at least a step in the right direction. Last year, Americans spent over two and a half billion dollars on products for their backs. Here's a nice item. <laughs> Why is this market so large? 
What would happen if Vice wasn't here, if, if we in uniform, the patrol division, if we weren't taking enforcement action? Your streets would be overrun with pimps and prostitutes. You'd have actual warfare out here on these corners with them claiming territory. See, Lieutenant Joe Dudo headed up Vice for the last four years. Now, as commander of a street patrol unit, he deals primarily with street crime and drugs. You're not trying to flag people down, I hope. I'm going on. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> After 24 years on the force, he understands the relationship between drug addiction and prostitution. This is the low of the low coming out here to the mission. This is where your speedballers, the people that use heroin and cocaine, they're so addicted. They're out here 24 hours a day, every waking hour that they could stay awake, trying to earn that money to feed that drug habit. She's trying to ignore me. I'm going to go out and take her on. Lieutenant Dudo spots a crack addict, a known prostitute, and decides to check her out. Excuse me. Take your hand up. I got a needle this morning. I know, I can see it. That's why. Is it loaded? No, it's not. 80% of all street prostitutes are addicted to drugs. Close your eyes. When was the last time you took coding? Um, this morning. I take my throat. When you open up, look straight over my shoulder. Uh, okay. Uh, Lieutenant Dudo checks her pupils to see how dilated they are. Follow the tip of my finger with your eyes, okay? Uh, Keep your head still. And does a number of other tests to try and determine what other drugs this woman is on. But the track marks on her arms reveal all he needs to know. Okay, I'm gonna take your pulse, relax. Her pupils are down to 2.0 millimeters, non-reactive, which is way down below normal, which shows that someone's under the influence of heroin. But now her pulse is up fairly high. She's up above 90, which shows that she's doing a combination of heroin and cocaine. Dudo runs her name, part of his scare tactic to get her off the street. Uh, she should have priors. Uh, hold on. How do you spell the name you got arrested under? She. 10-4, I'll advise. Thank you, headquarters. Okay, you got two minor traffic warrants, and you're under the influence. So, what should I do? Should I give you a break? Please. please. Where are you going to go? Home. You going to get off my streets? Yes. Okay. It's, you know, it's sad. I mean, it's just something I deal with. It's not a fun thing to arrest a lot of people, but it sure is, it is a positive thing when you get a lot of bad guys off the street and you really make an impact in different uh, neighborhoods. Another problem that falls under Vice's authority is illegal gambling. Somebody tipped off Vice about this card room operating in San Francisco's Chinatown. Hello. Okay. Gambling dens are extremely popular among the Asian community in San Francisco, and the majority of illegal gambling vice sees takes place in Chinatown. It doesn't look like much, a few tables in a basement apartment. But these video poker machines give Vice the hard evidence they need to make an arrest. Since the mid-80s, video poker machines have become a windfall for these small gambling dens. In recent years, the SFPD has confiscated over one quarter of a million dollars from video poker machines alone. The two poker machines are confiscated and hauled out. The Vice Squad stores them in a warehouse outside the city. Presently, there are 300 machines awaiting destruction, and Vice estimates there are thousands more operating around San Francisco. They used to be on the open. Now what they're doing is they're hiding the machines in the back room behind fake walls. And you actually have to go in and ask them, can you play the machines? They don't typically ask you, are you a police officer? Do you work for the law enforcement and everything else? Because they know once we get hold of the machines, they lose the machine and they lose the revenue coming in from the machines. 
Of the Vice Squad's 20 officers, only four are assigned full-time to gambling, only three to illegal liquor sales. The rest tackle prostitution. Vice spends 90% of its time and energy taking on those who sell their bodies for money and drugs. My whole philosophy is when I come to work, if I can do one positive thing during my tour of duty, then, then I feel like I've accomplished something. Sergeant Mike Lawson has just arrested Cheryl, a crack addict, for solicitation. She's not prostituting herself for a pimp or even very much money. She does it purely to feed her drug habit. Well, you have pipes all over. It's not good. That one's not good? I want you to smoke. Can you? Can you? To Lawson, these women are more victim than criminal. And sometimes, he says, arresting them is exactly what they need. She's very tired. She probably, at this point, even welcomes the, the, the short time in jail just to get the rest of something to eat and, and be clean for a couple of days or so. Sit with her. You got, you got any kids, Cheryl? Yeah, five kids. Five kids? It's a shame because you have five kids that you can't be responsible for, but, you know, that's, that's too bad, too, that you can't even... You can't even be with, you know, and that's that's sad, you know, because I mean, children need a mother, you know, and you can't even be a mother to them. I mean, I'm not here to make you feel bad or nothing, you know, I'm just talking to you. I can't make you feel any worse than I already feel. Yeah, I'm just talking to you, that's all. Just a waste, you know what I mean? I see so many people just wasting themselves, you know, for what, you know? Yeah, well, lonely. For, for what, you know, it's... Lawson knows the arrest will do little to help Cheryl, but he hopes he can at least get her to think. You can't like this lifestyle, huh? I, I, I hate it. Hate it? Yeah. Once you get caught up in the web, you're caught up in the web, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Prostitution gets to be a, a way of life, and after a while, you can't even think about selling down one man, you know what I'm saying? And I, my husband, I love, you know, but it's like I've been in the street life like for so long, it's like, you know, saying I'm like doing more hurting to him than I am to myself because I know he doesn't deserve to be hurt, but it's like the street life has got such a hold on me and shit, like, you know what I'm saying? In her desperate struggle with drug addiction and prostitution, Cheryl knows the officers of the vice squad are sometimes the only protection she has out on the streets. I, I don't really know what we would do without cops. I don't know what life would be like without them, you know. I'm not saying I don't like them, you know what I'm saying? I like what they stand for, but without them, I, I wouldn't want to be part of the world. You know what I mean? Hey, what would we do? There's something new growing. It's a cat and mouse game. We play, we play with them, and um, basically we try to solicit for prostitution, any acts of prostitution. Not only do we have to watch out for people that know us, but we're con also should concern about like pimps that sit in the car and watch their girls from across the street. Thursday afternoon in the Mission District. Officers Chin and Lantrip cruise the streets for daytime streetwalkers. Officer Chad Butler acts as a John, while Chin and Lantrip follow behind. Mark in the center and come back post that way. Okay, we'll go that way. If I don't find up there, I'll cut out towards uh, towards uh, uh, Fillmore. Okay. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's go try uh, downtown and uh, see what's going on out there. All right, down four. Sometimes the only way vice cops can catch prostitutes in the act is if they are new. Look, she's like she's brand new. So, have you ever seen her, Mark? No, I don't recognize her at all. I don't either. That's a cool tattoo. You a got hidden there. camera catches the action. Got a place we can go? Um, I've only been doing blowjobs, so I've been doing it in the car. Okay, what, 20? Can you go 30? I can go 30. You know a place we could go somewhere? I use condoms, though. Well, that's good for me. <laughs> Susan, Susan has a, our undercover, our undercover officer feels that he has the elements of the crime. 
it will uh, tap on the brakes. That would that would be our uh, prearranged uh, arrest signal. The decoy pulls into a deserted alley and gives the signal for the backup team to move in. Back up, back up, back up. Third car up. Oh, yeah, he just tapped his brakes. Yeah. Okay, he tapped his brakes, so he has the arrest. Officer Sue Rolovich, the Vice Squad star decoy prostitute, is also a divorced mother of four and sees no reason to hide what she does from her children. So, you know, they, you know, I just want to be open with them and hopefully, like I said, they'll learn and they'll grow up and they won't do those things. I just feel like you need to be honest with your children. When they've asked questions, like they always go, Mom, are you, they'll see the way I'm dressed and they'll go, Mom, are you going to go out and be a prostitute tonight? Who has practice tomorrow? I need to. I'm going to be I'm working. You're working all day tomorrow? Your coach can't drive you? These are like clothes I wear when I act decoy as a prostitute. And I keep them here, which is so easy access because I do it almost three nights a week. This is pretty funny because it's like goofy stuff. You know, but it was just like so cheap. And I go, oh, that'll be so good for work. Work for Officer Rolovich sometimes begins as early as three in the afternoon. The decoy team sits patiently nearby, waiting for Sue to bring in the day's catch. I think that guy, you know, in the green truck, he's going to come back. He was going to stop, but then he didn't, but he's going to come back twice. Wait, did we get him for a beat? Did we get him a beat? Uh, the vice cops never know what to expect. Today, Officer Rolovich spots a man masturbating in a nearby car. 85% of the men picked up by vice are first-time arrests. But today, the man in his car turns out to be a repeat sex offender. You're going to go downtown, and I'm going to book you on that charge because it's a continuing offense. It's always, hey, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just giving my money, and I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not doing anything wrong. They look at just themselves. They don't look at the problem. They look at a, a residential street where traffic's going up and down the street from four in the afternoon till two o'clock in the morning. Do this. I'm just saying that. You got ch children. Look at this. You, get this. you think she wants to see you exposing yourself? And, I, wasn't, and I wasn't doing it. Exposing yourself and masturbating yourself in public. Therefore, thanks. You know, it's against the law. You can't do that. Because this man is a repeat offender, he will be taken downtown and booked. Because it's, it's a film, if he's got a conviction for a, in decent, or another sex offense, if it's for a second time. Right. This guy is time, a, yeah, it's a, it's a, good, uh, it's a good one. Good pinch on this one. Yep. This guy uh, doesn't belong out in society, that's for sure. A good pinch for the vice squad. A repeat sex offender. Just a small part of the underbelly of society they deal with every day. Yeah, we told Bob we got uh, one working for sure, a uh, white male, blonde hair with uh, shaved sides and a Pendleton. It'll be in the south uh, east corner on uh, Austin and Polk. In a city known for its large gay community, 44% of all street prostitutes are men selling sex to other men. Spot down here and see. See, they're looking at him. The man on the left is a hustler, working the corner of Geary and Polk. The man on the right is an undercover vice cop. As soon as the solicitation is made, the backup team moves in. An HIV positive prostitute with a needle in his pocket, a very real danger that the vice cops face every day. Father River just give it to me. Okay, hold on. It is capped. It's good. What else? Is that it? That's it. Is there any other? 
One third of male prostitutes in San Francisco carry the virus that causes AIDS. This man has never been convicted of prostitution before. If he had, he'd be facing a much stiffer penalty. Once you're convicted, you always get a test. You get tested. And uh, if you are HIV positive and if you get arrested again, you're charged with a felony. Of all the male prostitutes in San Francisco, almost half are transsexual. I mean, if you look at them, you know, and they can they can basically trick some people. What, what's your name? Chantel. What's your boy name? What it used to be? Yeah. Louis. Louis. Even under the watchful eye of Vice, Chantel makes a good living as a prostitute, and knowing that just adds to the cops' frustrations. These girls, some of them make two or three times as much money as, as we do, as we get paid. No, no, how much do you make oh, in a year? Just five, seven, five. Okay. Wow. Hello, ladies. Come here. Come here now. You better get over here. Although it's been only six months. Mark Landtrip is already considering leaving Vice because he feels the work he does is so futile. It's a little disheartening. It's like going to the beach and, and digging a hole at the beach with your hand. Every time you take out sand, you know, thousands and thousands more grains fall back into the hole. You're going. No, you're going. You're going. Am I going? Hey, look, you know, you know the game, all right? And that's all it is, a game. You play, you got caught. Landrip knows that to these young prostitutes, going to jail is nothing more than a nuisance. No, go. Tonight, he lets one girl go, but decides to take the other one in. What happened? What happened last week? You took me to jail. No, I let you go. No, you took me straight to jail. Go. Landrip's taken in Alexis so many times, neither of them can keep it straight. Was it which one? Yeah. 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 Now who owes who? <laughs> huh? All right. Why did you get a case number? Compared to the bigger cities, Oakland, Sacramento, San Jose, San Diego, Los Angeles, um, the, the girls will spend time in jail. I mean, they will do jail time. Well, here they spend the night in jail and they're released. They're gone. They're back on the street making money again. Now they started. The frustrations of working in Vice have finally gotten to Officer Mark Lantrip. He's decided to trade in his Vice badge for his old uniform patrol job, where he says the work is more cut and tried. Sergeant Goltz. Here, sir. Officer Duke. Sir. Officer Landry. Here, sir. As far as being on patrol versus vice, you have a crime committed, it's something that's accepted. Yeah, this guy committed a crime, he's going to jail. And like I say, they're accepted crimes, everybody uh, acknowledges that they're crimes, and they prosecute on these crimes. And uh, that versus what goes on in vice, you know, there's no prosecution rate. Vice squad offenses really are offenses that have to do with in the area of victimless crime have to do with moral issues and uh, and differ from country to country and state to state and even from time to time and all of them I think would be better dealt with by something other than the criminal justice system but since there is no other out there it's it's up to us to keep things under control but most of the vice officers are afraid D.A. Hallinan doesn't make the connection between prostitution and other street crimes. So dealing with the D.A.'s office, it's tough sometimes because I, I know there's not a real emphasis on prostitution, which is sad to see because we've concentrated in certain areas and we've just about eliminated prostitution and a, and a very high prostitution area in the downtown area. And in that area, you could see the whole crime go down. Even though the vice officers get frustrated with the DA's office, they know there is only so much the DA can do. I understand his position. I understand what he has to do, and, and it's tough. It really is tough on him. It's just tough on us. I mean, it's a, it's a decision has to be made. 
resources. It comes down to resources. Despite the challenges, the officers are finally starting to see their efforts pay off, and vice squad arrests were up 25% in 1997. But what else can be done? One of the things Vice is doing is going after the Johns and seeing to it that they don't come back. They have implemented the First Offenders program, a day-long seminar that serves as an alternative to an arrest. Of the thousand Johns that have gone through the program so far, only four have been re-arrested. Many people believe the solution is to decriminalize prostitution altogether. And no one feels more strongly about that than the prostitutes themselves. Right now, they can't really afford to take everybody to court. That's why they dismiss everything. People are going to do it whether you like it or not, so you might as well box it and sell it and tax it. I would like to have a system in San Francisco where prostitution was controlled as a business. There's a segment of population that feels that prostitution should be legal. And they don't understand that the gals are the biggest victims in this whole scheme of things. Few people understand the issue better than Norma Hotelling, a former prostitute and heroin addict. She now runs SAGE, an organization set up to get prostitutes off the streets. I clearly don't agree with legalization. One of the things that legalization does is it compares women to objects. When we start comparing women to objects, we can say, yes, there's a user and there's a product. Unfortunately, we're calling the women the product. And in these instances, the products get abused. In Norma's support group, these recovering prostitutes share some of their worst experiences as a way to start healing. And then I stashed the keys out the ignition and I jumped out of the car on the freeway. We going like um, 55 miles per hour. I have cement burns all the way to my bone. Most of the women and girls that come to our groups, they've had decades of, um, of victimization. And now it's time to get rid of that, to stop the victimization, and to have a life. As the city of San Francisco continues to struggle with the question of legalization and the lack of prosecution, each officer perseveres in his own way. There's got to be something better than this. So I think uh, I'm probably going to opt and uh, move on. That's what we do, and that's our job, man. We will go out there every single day and arrest these girls every single time. In regards to doing this job, you have to go day to day. You can't you look too far down the tunnel. Through all the struggles, one thing remains constant. There will always be work for the San Francisco Vice Squad. The frustration of arresting prostitutes, only to find them back on the street an hour later, takes its toll on vice officers. While Sue Rolovich continues to go undercover as a prostitute three nights a week, Sergio Chen decided to follow Mark Lantrip's lead and take a break from the vice squad. He now works in another district doing routine patrol work. I'm Bill Curtis. Join me next time for another edition of Inside Story here on A&E.